It's quite easy to feel proud having a job like this, but nothing compares to how proud you feel when you help somebody out coming up the ladder like you did years ago. And in this case, uh, my mate Danny, I can't tell you how proud I am of him. I'm going to put a link up here in the upper right hand corner if you want to check out his interview that I did with him a while ago. But anyway, it was a nice day. We were going into Port Jeff and uh, he had the watch and he took it in and let me mic him up. So enjoy the ride. Here's Danny. Jeff, uh, we got a loaded barge going to the second dock on the right. Uh, gonna have to top around, go port side too, just the rule that the dock has. Um, got the ferry coming at me right now, I already talked to him. I'll get over as soon as we pass these next two buoys, I'll get over, see him on one whistle. Because meeting him in the itty bitty channel is not as fun. We got the wind on our port side now, so as soon as we get topped around, uh, whatever wind we have should be setting us on the dock, which is nice. It's a loaded barge, so it won't be uh, a huge force on us, but it'll help. And current just started to flood, so not too too much acting on us. The wind on the port side is kind of setting me a little, so I'm angled this way. Make sure I clear that red buoy. As soon as I clear it, I'll come over to the right and give this ferry more room. Start bleeding some speed off all the way out here just because we have a loaded barge and so it takes longer to burn off the momentum. So now that we're inside the breakwater, we're going to start losing the wind on us because of all the bluffs on the port side. I don't need to keep as much speed on to keep steerage. So I'll start bleeding off the speed even though we're all, all the way out here.
we get up to the dock, since that's the top around, go port side two. I'll turn around uh, counterclockwise with the stern of the tug to the dock and benefit of that, doing it that way, as opposed to bow towards the dock, is that um, I can control my distance from the dock much better because as I come up to it and go like this, if I'm too close, if my turn is getting my tug stern too close to the dock like that, my engines can just go ahead and give me that extra room, that extra clearance uh, much better than if I was turning bow towards the dock. If my bow was going to clip it, I would have to reverse and engines are more powerful ahead than a stern, so going like this is a lot sketchier of a maneuver than jetting away. It's much easier to get more clearance that way. In addition, um, if I'm too far, or if I want to get it just right, uh, I can keep my stern and my tug as close to the dock as possible, so that when I finish the 180 and come like this, I just keep the spin going and back into position and end up flat. You just try to time the momentum of your spin such that it dies off right as you finish your 180 and you just land flat. That's the idea. Uh, there's wiggle room on either sides. Uh, so, we'll get there. Security call, Tug Elk River, topping around Port Jeff, Northville platform, loaded oil barge and push, Tug Elk River. Security call, security call, Tug Elk River, inbound Port Jefferson Harbor, loaded oil barge and push gear, and be topping around off the Northville dock, Tug Elk River. see up on the chart blotter. Right there. Where we're going.
trying to bleed off the last of my speed. Hey, you got me there. Yep, I got you. Uh, we're gonna top around stern to the dock. So Chris will be up on the bow, um, giving me distances, talking me off, but realistically, I have a much better view of our stern than he does. So during this whole top around, at least, this first part, um, he's not gonna have many distances to give me. But as soon as we're facing the right way, uh, he'll talk me into the spot. Try to get a forward spring line first. PT Barnum, Elk River. PT Barnum back. Hey Cap, uh, I'm just topping around, uh, going to this Northfield dock. I should be uh, all finished turning around by the time we get here. Just give me a heads up. Hi right, Cap, sounds good. Keep an eye out for you. There's another ferry coming in uh, for stern. Hopefully we should be all turned around and uh, at least alongside the dock by the time he gets up here. If not, he'll probably just pull her back. Wait for me. So blood off most of my speed and I'm a decent distance off the dock right now. So I'm gonna start giving it left rudder. And I'll start twisting around. Um, like I said, I wanna keep my stern somewhat close to the dock and these case the cells. Um, so that by the time we finish our turn, we're not miles away uh, from where we wanna be. But as I do this turn, my stern's gonna get kicked over more and more as we're pushing that way. So my stern will drift towards the dock this entire time. It'll get closer and closer to over 90 degrees to it. And then I'll use my uh, port engine, a stern, to try and keep me close, but not too close uh, to the dock. Give her a good shot with the starboard engine. Get it spinning. And give us enough momentum to get over there. I'm going to use my port engine now. I don't actually want to get 
a lot of momentum going uh, forward. Uh, I don't want to pass up the dock. So then my port engine starts slowing me down, sucking me towards the dock. You guys can't see it. There's no cameras facing that way, but uh, our stern's probably like 70 or so, 70 feet off of uh, the cells back there. So we got plenty of room. So I'll use my port engine, a stern, more, try and close that distance. though so I gotta keep my starboard engine ahead give it a few shots ahead keep the spin going this is just just my port engine astern it won't spin us at all it'll just move us astern uh, and we'll lose the spin mind is um, this spin is looking pretty slow which is kind of can be annoying I mean you want to get turned around but um, this spin can build up a lot of momentum especially with this loaded barge so if I get if I complete my 180 and parallel to the dock and then I stop spinning with my engines the, the load barge unit is still going to spin on its own. So I have to slow my spin down, use less and less horsepower as I go, uh, ideally. Uh, so that when I finish my spin, I don't smash my bow into the dock, which is a bad time. Stern's starting to close up on the dock, probably 60-ish off. Another thing to keep in mind is um, during the final part of this spin, before I'm flat with the dock, the stern of the tug, 
can go past the dock since it's it's a it's a pier. Uh, there's uh, water on the sides and behind the dock, but it's not deep water, so I don't want to let my stern, the stern of the tug, get inside of the dock. Uh, and then I, I might run aground, so uh, try to get flat before the stern of the tug peaks, peaks past there. Just giving it another shot of stern to get close up the distance between us and the dock while I still have a good angle. And bow is still coming over so I don't need to use too much on my head engine. And that ferry's coming as well, so get a move on before he gets here. saying, thinking about that momentum from the spin, I'm just going to go all stop and let it peter out as much as I can. We've got a good, a good spin going. We're headed towards the dock. Stern hasn't crossed that plane of the dock yet, so I don't have to worry about it going around. Look at the chart plotter. That little pocket there, so I'll start coming ahead to clear that as the shallows get closer. This whole maneuver puts us behind spot, which is good. You want to drive up to the spot. It's easier than backing up, backing to the spot. So I have room to come ahead. this pretty safe. Um, I wasn't, my stern wasn't super close to the dock this whole time. Uh, just, just wanted to play it safe, didn't want to get too close. Try not to use a ton of horsepower to get out of a bad situation. I'd rather be out here further off the dock and then get over slowly rather than be really close to the dock and risk slamming into it um, just because it's it's kind of tough to get that momentum dialed in I still need to practice that but that'll work out and we're generally flat enough that ferry can get by so we're not putting a burden on him or anything As about when Chris will start talking me in um, to our spot and make I don't care uh, he'll start talking me into where he wants to get a forward spring line for our first line Uh, 
Oh, we finished this 180 winds on our starboard side now, pretty much perpendicular to us, which is good. It'll just set us right on the dock. And you can see our bow still has momentum. I'm gonna stop, but it's still swinging like this. So our stern's swinging away, but our bow is still moving towards the dock. It's pretty slow, but uh, that's what's happening. So if I were to twist the other way, uh, port ahead, starboard stern, I could, with our engines, move our stern close to the dock and count on the momentum we still have to keep our bow moving towards the dock. Okay. And I'll count on the momentum we still have from the spin to keep our bow moving that way. So we can move the entire unit to port, even though I got starboard rudder, which is cool. I don't have too much momentum though, so I'm not going to move that whole 70 feet that way. I could try to walk it uh, over there, but it's a loaded barge. Walking with a loaded barge is not uh, as effective. And we're moving that way all the time. We got the wind putting us over there. The current's flooding. So since we have this angle, the current is hitting us here, which will close us to the dock. So I've got those two forces putting me to the dock already. So I'm not really too worried about uh, trying to walk it over or get over there faster. Not in a rush. Uh, we're down to like 50 now and we gotta come ahead like 35 to the next path. 35 ahead. bow is still angled in uh, closer to the dock than our stern is, so I'll preload my rudder so that uh, when we start closing and I want to land flat, I can twin screw to starboard and flatten out so we don't land one end blatantly before the other. Okay. Yeah, I've been all stopped this whole time, last couple minutes, and it's just the wind and the current doing it now. It's easy when nature does it for you. I'm not too worried about getting the spot. Um, for the manifold hookup right on the money right now. I'm mostly concerned about it. Not right. I just want to get coverage on that third pad he was talking about uh, to grab that first line. Uh, once we have a, a line to work with, I can come ahead or start. Uh, we're gonna slow ahead right down now. We have no coverage on this pad. We're trying just if you can get it like kind of straight in. We should be pretty close to the spot. Okay, kill an headway. Yeah, there's no reason to uh, mess with mess with my momentum when it's going good, uh, just to try and nail the spot or anything. I'll just try and keep us flat, get us close to the dock. Yeah, we're flattening out all the time. Okay. 
like I was saying, we're, we're sliding ahead a little bit, so I'll give it some a stern, but I'm really not too bothered by sliding ahead right now because we're closing uh, nicely. Uh, yeah, we're just like inching ahead, which is perfect. Um, there's no to pull this into a All right. Yeah, if, if we pass up the spot, I'm not worried um, because we're closing so nicely right now. I'm not going to mess with it uh, just to try and nail the spot out here. I'd rather land flat, get an, a line nice and easy. As soon as we touch off, I'll work ahead. They were up to a lot of bell and like two in the stern. So even though we are moving kind of, we are moving slowly. Uh, we're about to down, but once we touch up, it'll it will still bounce a little bit. So we'll give it port rudder. So we gotta go ahead five. We got a little bit of slack in the forward line, so it should be good. Five ahead. So when I come ahead, I'll give it a uh, port rudder, or start, yeah, sorry, yeah, port rudder, starboard engine head, just keep the bow on a little bit. Uh, keep that bounce, or bring that bounce back. But I don't want to... Uh, that should be good there, so I'm just going to pull this tight the rest of the way. Okay. Yeah, when I'm coming into a spring line like this, uh, there's still some slack in it. You heard Chris say he's going to take up the slack. Um, if I just put one ahead, it came into a spring line with five feet of slack in it. With a loaded barge, that's putting a lot of shock load on that spring line. And I mean, it could probably take it, but I really don't want to test that. So when I'm coming into a spring line, I, uh, lift it up now. I want it to do that. I want it to lift up as I'm kind of popping it in and out of gear uh, so that we put a steadier strain on it so that as soon as it comes fully taut then I can put one in gear and leave it in gear so I'm not shock loading it and bouncing on the line that'll part it uh, eventually so now that we're generally t tight into that line I'll put my port engine ahead and give okay and give right rudder so that our stern is pushed over to the dock with the rudder uh, so we stay flat along the dock. And similar to how it was when we ca uh, came in initially, uh, the bow can bounce if it lands first, so even when I'm coming into the spring line, so if I need to, I'll give it left rudder, right rudder. All right, just to get back from the bounce, stay flat, yada yada. But hey, we're here. I'll just stay into this line, flat against the dock, and finish tying up. Thanks for watching. If you have constructive criticism, remember Tim trained me, so if I did anything wrong, it's all his fault. And see you next time.